Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be learning about Cosmos DB. Azure Cosmos Database is a globally distributed multi-model database as a service uh, for any scaling. The service was built from the ground up with the global distribution and horizontal scale at its core functionality with a turnkey globally distributed across any number of Azure regions and as your cosmos database transparently scales and replicates your data whenever uh, wherever your users are elastically scales your writes and reads all around the globe and pays only for what you need actually so as your cosmos database provides a native support for known no sql and oss apis uh, including uh, if you see here uh, those are the apis which i'm talking about for example uh, if I can take it as a MongoDB and Germlin and Spark or an SQL, there are multiple things we can take as examples here. And it also offers multiple well defined consistency models, guaranteed single digit millisecond read or write latency at the 99th percentile and guaranteed 99.39% high availability with a multi home anywhere in the in the world so all the backend uh, by industry leading comparative SLS are offered by Azure uh, Cosmos database so it's fully managed service that enables you to offload the administrative burdens of operating and scaling distributed uh, database to Azure so you don't have to worry about managing your VMs hardware's provisioning set up the configuration capacity replication even server patching or clustering scaling all that was taken care of by Cosmos database uh, as a service in short your application needs guaranteed fast response time anywhere in the world if it's required to be always online and needs unlimited and elastic scalability of uh, through output and storage you should build your application on a cosmos db uh, the best examples a type of applications would be like twitter or maybe a facebook would be a right uh, application models so such kind of an applications can be used so users can uh, post their data anywhere and that would automatically replicate to the cosmos db across the different regions across the different regions so in terms of the latency there will not be any data loss so this is the normal uh, architecture of cosmo database how uh, how it looks like from the application point of view yes i'm exactly talking about the application point of view because i'm not talking about inside the azure cosmo database architecture but this is how you are going to actually design the application let's say if a user coming either from any of their browser or any other uh, method over the internet uh, that request is trying to pull some data from maybe trying to get the information from the Cosmo database, what would happen is it actually goes to traffic manager and then the application gateway based on the uh, regions, either West or North, or in this case, it's the Southeast Asia. So what of the uh, region uh, based, it actually diverts the traffic with the help of traffic manager. And from there, the application gateway will take the uh, load and it takes hey should i transfer to a what kind of web tire and you have three different web tire machines so it will take that application gateway and it routes that information and from there it would actually uh, if you have the load balancer in in between with the help of the uh, load balancer it will actually divert the traffic um, within any of these regions and this is called the mid tire so if you see here till this place there is nothing actually writing to the database so when the information was retrieved either from any any information either retrieved or write read or write uh, operations by these users uh, actually in the back end cosmo database will take care com completely it would be taken care uh, for the replication so that data will be everywhere available across the regions so what are the key benefits of the globally distribution because uh, these replication of the data we call it as a global distribution so what are the uh, major advantages so you get the high availability when I say high availability unlimited uh, elastic read and write scalability that also you get it also 99.39 read and write availability all around the world so 
across the regions you get the same data almost uh, guaranteed read and write served in less than 10 milliseconds at 19th percentile so that's the advantage when we go for the Azure Cosmos database as outcome of the Cosmos database we can build highly responsive applications built also highly available applications with the 99.999 percentile you can build applications or you can maintain business continuity during regional outages because Cosmo database or replicates across the regions and Cosmos database supports automatic failover during the regional outages so during the any regional outage as your Cosmo database continues to maintain its latency availability consistency and throughout the SLAs to help make sure that your entire application is highly available Cosmos database offers a manual failover um, even for the APIs to simulate regional outages by using APIs that can carry out of the regular business continuity drills and also you can scale and read and write uh, throughout the globally as we talked and you can choose from several well-defined consistency models um, so when we talk about the consistency models as you Cosmo database replicates protocols offers five well-defined uh, practical and intuitive consistency models each model has a trade-off between consistency and performance use these uh, consistency models to build globally distributed application with ease when it comes to the legacy method you have only two methods of uh, consistency options but with the Azure Cosmo DB you have five different types of consistency options so the developer can choose based on his required uh, option so he can choose the he can choose any of the spectrum of choices so there are five different options you have the first one includes as the strong and bonded stainless and session based and consistency based in the prefix and eventual so these are the options but with the legacy you have only the strong or you go for the leg, uh, eventual but uh, but with the as your Cosmo DB you have the options are the three also so you have total five different options as a developer you can choose it and you can based on your choice you would be getting the output um, that in terms of the SLEs or for the stronger consistency or weaker consistency the first one is the strong one. So the strong consistency offers the linearizability guarantee. That means it refers to the servicing request uh, concurrently. The reads are guaranteed to retain the most recent committed version of an item. A client never sees an uncommitted or partial write information. So users are always guaranteed to read the um, latest committed write. If you see this graph, it illustrates the strong consistency with the musical notes. So after the data is written to versus to a region, when you read the data from other regions, you get the most recent value as it is almost, right? So that's the representation. The next consistency level would be bounded staleness. Bounded staleness is frequently chosen by global distributed applications that expect low write latency but require uh, total global order guarantee. So if you see here, uh, bounded staleness is a great for applications featuring groups collaboration and sharing stock ticker or maybe publishing subscriber or queuing etc. Kind of you know, different applications can be used. So if you see the musical graph notes or musical notes um, this represent actually if you see west us2 region and the east us2 region uh, and also australia east what would happen is the read and write values on these are configured maximum lag time or maximum operations so this is uh, this is how it's going to work so once it is conformly written here it actually there would be a little bit of lag but it actually gets replicated so this is the advantage of using bounded staleness the next consistency level would be the session based so with the single client session reads the guarantee to honor the consistent prefix 
or monotic read or monotic write or read your write or write follows guarantees so these kind of assumptions is a single write uh, session or sharing the session token for multiple writes so this is where it's going to use like uh, session consistency is the most widely used consistency level for both the single region as well as the globally distributed applications it actually provides a write latency availability and read through through output comparable to the eventual consistency but also provides the consistency guarantee that suits the or needed of the application written to operate in the context of a user specific so if you look at the again musical notes uh, way of representation here the west used to write and uh, West used to read are using the same session based like a, we can think that as a session a uh, so they both read the same data at the same time whereas the australia east region is using session b specific so it receives the data later but the same order as it um, writes actually so if you see here it's the same order it's gonna receive this one it's become here and then b and the same order of the B session so that's how it's gonna work the next consistency level would be the consistent uh, prefix so this basically updates that returns uh, contain some prefix of all the updates with no gaps so consistent uh, prefix consistently uh, it gives the level of guarantee that reads never see out of order right let's say if you have a ABC and then a client sees either a or a b or a b c but but never out of order like uh, a and c or b a c kind of thing if you see here red red and uh, blue blue and if you see here again so the red red it's coming and followed by again a different color but it never actually goes in the uh, different order so it will eventually you get the latency but it doesn't go out of sync altogether so that's how it's gonna work and the last one would be the eventually so there's no ordering guarantee for reads uh, so in absence of any further rights the replica eventually coverage so eventually consistency is the weakest uh, from the consistency level because a client may read the values that are older than the one it had or read before so eventually consistency is ideally uh, ideally where the application does not require any ordering guarantee for example uh, it can include count of retweets likes or non-thread comments uh, for your application so that's where you can use this kind of uh, a consistency level of database and you can choose it so that you can save a lot of cost and minimize the uh, cost point of view so that way we concluded uh, almost the five different options what we have within the consistency levels so we started with the strong and the bonded staleness and session based for the users and consistency prefix and eventual so as you go from strong to eventual the stronger uh, consistency gets weaker and weaker and uh, if you see here the compassion uh, ensures a document and replication uh, that shows that no lagging behind the primary that's where you use the uh, stronger consistency and it recommends the application that required all the time all the replica to be exactly matched with your primary uh, primary data any point of time like your actual tweet uh, but if you look at in other side here uh, if you just go to the weaker side it doesn't matter the number of likes or number of uh, count of your comments uh, as you scroll down it might actually come up so that's where you can actually use the a weaker consistency level hope the lecture is useful for you thank you for watching this